Last year, Florida State was national championship caliber with Jordan Travis at quarterback. Now they've got DJ Uyunglele. Is that really good enough? That's Brian Smith, Locked On Seminoles, joining me here on the show. Let's start with that question before we get to the schedule, Brian. Do you think that DJ Uyunglele can be the quarterback of a team that plays for and or wins a national championship? I do not. you got to prove me wrong here, but for four years he's been too inconsistent, especially with accuracy, because he has games where he's hot. Uh, His freshman year he threw for like 420 yards at Notre Dame. I mean, that's insane, but he's had also had games where he threw for like a buck 60, buck 70, and he was just inconsistent, especially on third down. I don't like picking guys that are roller coasters at any spot, but especially behind center. So I say no. Yeah, when I look at him, I'm not the biggest fan. I don't think he's bad. I just don't think that he gets you to a level where you were at with Jordan Travis a year ago. And I know that's a sore spot for FSU fans to hear because, of course, the injury, the playoff debacle, and and yada, yada, yada. But Florida State is now working with a guy who two of the last three years as a starter has been under 60% completion. He's coming from a system at Oregon State with Jonathan Smith that did not require him to do a lot. Now, he won games. He was successful. I'm not sitting here saying that because of DJU, Florida State's about to have a 5-7 and seven just train wreck of a year. I don't think that at all. I just look at them and say, could they win the ACC with him? Maybe, yeah. I, I think that is possible. I think the rest of the roster could carry him to, to that point. I just don't think you can rely on him and – You can't expect him to just suddenly realize that five-star potential in his fifth year. He's been at at two different schools. This is stop number three. I think he is what he is. He's he's got a high floor. I just don't see the ceiling there to bring you the sort of dynamic playmaking that, that wins you a national championship. That's pretty much where I am. To get to that next level for Florida State, especially they don't have the same depth is let's say Georgia does in the trenches, not that anybody does. you got to make up for it with somewhere else. The easiest way to do it is quarterback. Well, DJ has never been a dominant guy week to week. Prove me wrong again. And Florida State's biggest Achilles this year might be the receiver position because they lost two dominant guys in Johnny Wilson and Keon Coleman. So there were some throws last year that Jordan threw, and it was like, oh, where's that going? And they made snags that NFL players do. They're not in Tallahassee anymore. Those balls that go over their head could end up in the hands of a free safety going the other direction this year. That's a concern I have. Now, he's still a big guy that can run a little bit, and they got a very experienced offensive line, very deep. Running back room's great. Tight end, they got a really good one. Kyle Morlock, et cetera. They're going to score. But can they do that in the, what I call the four games? Like every team plays about four games that it's like, okay, talent level's a little different here. Can he be a difference maker in any of those four? They got Miami on the road. They got Notre Dame on the road. They got Clemson at home. They got a kind of a tricky game to open the season, George Tech. It's in Ireland on August 24th. It's bizarre. They got a pretty good offense. If Florida State's D has a little off day, George Tech's going to score. They can score. Their defense is horrendous, but can DJ take advantage of it? So you have chances to trip up, and then they got the Memphis game. They've got Seth Hennigan, a really good quarterback. SMU can score. There's so many possibilities for them to slip up if he has an off day. I just don't know how you can say they're a national title contender unless something really changes. Yeah, I think the rest of the roster is really good, among the best in the ACC, because we're talking about this from a national standpoint, not from an ACC standpoint. You know, where does he fit in in the rankings of the best quarterbacks in the ACC? He's not at the bottom, but he's definitely not at the top for me. He's probably, you know, just outside of the top tier of guys from what I've seen from him in his career. Whereas you mentioned, he'll have games where he goes 20 and 24 and it's 300 yards and three touchdowns, no picks. And then the next game, he'll complete 50% of his passes. Like this has been a consistent theme. Does Mike Norvell get the best out of him? We've seen coaches revitalize guys before. Certainly Oregon did that with uh, Bo Nix. You talk about Kalen DeBoer and Michael Penix. Like I've seen that take place. I just am not as optimistic that, that Florida State despite having a great offensive line and what should be a really good consortium of running backs, I don't know that they have everything they need to suddenly make him into you know, a, a Heisman guy. And so when you look at this at the schedule, Brian, the win total, according to our friends at FanDuel, is 9.5. I think that's about right. I don't think Florida State wins fewer than eight games. I think that's just 
a disaster scenario because Norvell's a really good coach and they have a lot of talent and they're going to win at least that many. The question is, do they get to 10 or 11 in that Notre Dame game on the road? That that one's certainly tough. But when I look at what is their most important game, not just to win the ACC, but to get to the playoff or be an at-large playoff team if they don't win the ACC, I think it's that game October 26th at Miami that that, uh, that stands out to me as the game that they've got to have to solidify themselves as having the chance to to prove us wrong and go play for a national championship. If they win there, I mean, that's a rivalry green that is part of the reason I love college football. been watching that game for over 30 years, and it's an incredible matchup every time they go at it. Miami, Ward only knows what you're going to get week to week. Um, they've got roster-wise probably the best roster, one through 85, in the league. Uh, whether or not it's the best managed is another story, and I would – lean strongly towards no, but at the same time, it's in their house. They've lost to Florida State the last two years. Everybody's talking about that in the state of Florida. It's very important for Mario Cristobal because it's year three for him at his alma mater. That game is going to be wild. And DJ on the road, not necessarily the guy I'd want to wager on. And they also have Cam Ward, who you know, because he was at Washington State the last couple of years. Uh, he's a fumbling machine, but he's also somebody that can make big plays. He had 14 fumbles last year, which is crazy. But that's it. I mean, everything else is pretty good with him. He's mobile, makes crazy throws, and has an incredible arm. They do some really nuts things. You, against Florida State secondary, you need that because they, they might have the best overall secondary in the country. It's definitely top 10 conservatively. Florida State and Miami will be a close game. I think between Miami and Clemson at home, FSU probably drops – one of those games just kind of my feeling but oh. i think that i think that flip of i'd rather have miami on the road than clemson on the road oh, because one, one is a far more daunting home environment to go into than, than the other and both are going to be among the best rosters in, in the acc this year but this isn't an impossible schedule it's not easy i think it's kind of leaning towards harder than average but not ridiculously brutal if you're florida state Start with Georgia Tech. I agree it's weird. I think they'll be fine. I don't think they can overlook the Memphis game at home. Memphis, I don't either. They, they are the favorites in the American Athletic Conference, and they have the second or third best odds to make the playoff in the entire group of five. They have had a really good transfer portal offseason. They've got a great quarterback in, in Seth Hennigan, and I, I, I'm i not picking FSU to win or to, to lose that football game at home. It's just one that I will not be surprised if I'm scoreboard watching and I look over and, oh, FSU is only up by eight points with, you know, 13 minutes to go in the fourth quarter. No, I, I, that wouldn't surprise me either. Uh, Seth Hennigan, along with just a few other guys, was a really good player as a freshman at the quarterback spot a few years ago. Yeah, one of them just went number one overall in the draft. That's Caleb Williams. So the other one was Drake May. He's pretty good, too. It's hard to do that. He's been a dude for them since he arrived at Memphis. He's a Dallas area kid. He's got a really nice arm, and he makes reads after the snap. You can't fool him like a lot of other kids. That's why I think he'll end up making an NFL roster, making a nice living for himself. Yeah, if they screw around with that game, that that could be a problem. SMU's another one like that, too. They got a guy that can throw it, a mm -hmm. Dallas area kid. Those are tough games. The one saving grace here, or two, if you will, NC State Louisville are not on the schedule. Yep. The state's defense is a pain to play for or play against because it's it's unique. And then Louisville has one of the best play callers in the country as their head coach. So they do avoid those. Yeah, I think that's where the breaks come in. Like it's a mostly manageable schedule. I don't think any other games are going to trip up Florida State. I think their roster is too good. You know, SMU on the road. Yeah, maybe, but. I think FSU's got a, a big roster gap there. And, and the same applies to Memphis. I just think it's one you can overlook. But, I mean, Cal, Duke, uh, you and I are both low on North Carolina this year. I'm fading North Carolina every chance that, that I get. Florida is at home. I don't think that's going to provide too much of uh, of an issue this year. I mean, they won on the road against Florida last year with who, – who was the quarterback at that time? Was it Brock Glenn? It, true yeah, freshman. yeah, yeah, with a true with a true freshman. Like I think they'll, I think they'll be all right. Brian Smith locked on Seminoles. Also uh, does some work uh, for on the recruiting side of things for us here at the network. Brian, thanks for stopping by. Thank you, sir.